This morning, I would like to also let you know that um, we would request the prayers for Bob uh, and his family. They have called Hassas in, and so this is a difficult time for everyone. So be with, uh, with Janet and, and her sister and her family um, as they walk this way with Bob. Also, uh, Linda Clutter requested that we lift up Deanna the arrival of a new baby um, and pray for protection and for and a healthy baby um, that's due tomorrow but they're not exactly sure when so um, we are glad you were here this fifth Sunday of, of uh, Easter and this Mother's Day uh, Sunday and if I can see through the Sun we're going to try and start with our Sung prelude, uh, fourth verse, just as I am. Sorry, wrong one. Just fear. In the Lord we will take our refuge, for God is our strength. Come to the Lord who will surround you with God's own righteousness. Lord, open our hearts and our spirits so that we may faithfully follow you. Amen. We'll be singing, standing on the promises, that good old hymn.
join me in the prayer of confession. Lord of abiding love and in be with us this day. We have come from our stress, difficulties, as well as hope and joy. We bring to you our concern and our hope and our fears, and you offer healing mercy. We confess that we haven't thought a whole lot about you this week. We have let events and demands crowd you out of our thoughts and our actions. Yet when we come to this, you, your house, and we kneel in contrition, seeking your forgiveness for our blindness and sin, turn our lives around, Lord. Help us to look again at the ways in which you bless and care for us. Help us to be the people who will reach out to others in loving compassion. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to these words of assurance. Even though we are stubborn, God still loves us, loves us, and forgives us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. And now we come to a time of a litany for Mother's Day. And if you will join me in this litany. Mothers come from many different forms, and today we celebrate them all. Thank God for mothers. Everyone here is either a son or a daughter. Thank God for my mother. For those women who have joined God in heaven and whom we miss dearly here on earth, thank God for the mothers of the past. For every woman who is working day and night to raise her children right now, thank God for the mothers of today. For the women who took in others' children through adoption and foster care, Thank God for the mothers with big hearts so big. For those women who have lost a child to death and must carry on, thank God for mothers who are strong. For all the women who have desperately wanted to have children of their own but chose to mother everyone else, thank God for the mothers in spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the women who have influenced our lives in so many ways. We pray that we will honor them in everything we do. Amen. I would like to remind you that there are, um, there are mothers in our midst, those that um, have never wanted children, too, and those that are not necessarily men, because um, mothering is a job we all do. Our prayer this morning, and I want to bring up um, a special prayer for Cheryl and Linda Mix, who will be celebrating their 20, I'm sorry, their 20th, their, their 60th anniversary this week. And our dear friend Charlene Schaefer's birthday is today, so if you want to give her a call or um, send her a text, I'm sure she would appreciate that. Let us go to God in prayer. The brightness and dazzle of Easter has dimmed in our midst, Lord. We have allowed ourselves to slip back into old habits and attitudes. Bring us today to your resurrection spirit, that we may know your abiding love and presence. We want to place our trust in you, Lord. We want to be of service to you by serving others. But our courage and strength waver, and we wonder if we can do the work you've set before us. Remind us as we bring these names to you that you are here with us. Lord, we lift up Ray and Bobby Abbott, Jacqueline Collier, Betty Combs and family for the loss of Bob Combs, Dora Mae Crawford, Marilyn and Dick Eagles, Wayne Garcia, Isabel Geibel, Reverend Margaret Gilligan, Debbie Hall and family, Sue Jenkins, Dakota Miller, Cheryl and Linda Bix, 
Bob Myers and his family, Vicki and Gerald Myers, Wayne and Alice Phillips, Roy and Vicki Russell, Marilyn Roberta, Charlene Schaefer, Poeta Spearman, Matthew Stanley, Larissa Trujillo, Byron and Amy Ulrich, Eleanor Ward, Alice Wardlow. Lord, we lift up Linda Wilson and her family and the loss of her brother. Linda Clutter and her family, Betty Finley and family, the family of Roger Jamonson, Anthony Lobato and family, Linda the Maris and family, Shirley Myers and family, Bishop Karen and family, and Claudia and Jolene Robinson and family, and also Linda Nix and her family. God, we come before you today with those that need surgery or have health concerns. We ask, dear Heavenly Father, that you would be with the doctors and medical staff, as well as those individuals, and that guidance and protection would be foremost, and healing, Lord. We ask that you would be with our community, especially, Lord, as we begin to open things up. Give us protection and, and wisdom as we move forward. Be with all of those essential workers, Lord, including our farmers and our truck drivers and all of those who put themselves in harm's way. And we especially lift up our police and first responders and our military, Lord. Give them protection. And we ask that you would be with those that are risking themselves for the, to have our country continue on. We lift up our local leaders, our state leaders, our national leaders, especially our president, and our global leaders. We pray that your, your Holy Spirit would go before and give them wisdom and give them guidance. And Lord, we pray for the welfare of our world. We pray that you would help in wise decisions and you would help those that are struggling. We lift up those that struggle from addiction and all other issues, Lord. We ask that you would help them find someone that will come alongside of them. We pray that you would raise up those that will walk beside them. And Lord, we just give you the praise for what you're going to do even in these times of restriction. And as we come to you this morning and pray the prayer you taught us to pray, we ask, dear Heavenly Father, that, that those words would become more than just words, but a way that we live. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily, but this, this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Got a tickle in my throat. <laughs> Today's scripture, Old Testament scripture, comes from 1 Samuel 1, 1 through 28. Now there was a certain man from Rabba, a Zupite, from the highlands of Ephraim, whose name was Ekanah. His He was from the tribe of Ephraim, and he was the son of Jerohim, son of Ehu, son of Tohu, son of Zut. Akon had two wives, one named Hannah and the other named Pinnah. Pinnah had children, but Hannah didn't. Every year this man would leave his town to worship and sacrifice the Lord of the heavenly forces in Shiloh, where Eli's two sons, Ephi and Phinehas, were the Lord's priests. Wherever he sacrificed, or whenever he sacrificed, Ekanah would give parts of the sacrifice to his wife, Penah, and to her sons and daughters. He would only give one part to Hannah, though he loved because the Lord had kept her from conceiving. And because the Lord had kept Hannah from conceiving, 
driver would make fun of her just to bother her, so that this is what took place year after year. When Hannah went to the Lord's house, Timothy would make fun of her, and then she would cry and wouldn't eat anything. Hannah, why are you crying, her husband Echidah would say to her. Why don't you eat? Why are you so sad? Aren't I worth more than ten sons? One time after eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah got up and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting in the chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple. Hannah was very upset and couldn't stop crying as she prayed to the Lord. Then she made this promise. Lord of heavenly forces, just look at your servant's pain and remember me. Don't forget your servant. Give her a boy. Then I'll give him to the Lord for his entire life. No razor will ever touch his head. As she kept praying before the Lord, Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah was praying in her heart. Her lips were moving, but her voice was silent. So Eli thought she was drunk. How long will you act like a drunk? Sober up, Eli told her. No, sir, Hannah replied. I'm just a very sad woman. I haven't had any wine or beer, but have been pouring my heart out to the Lord. Don't think your servant is some good-for-nothing woman. I've been praying out of my great worry and trouble. Eli responded, Then go and may the God of Israel give you what you've asked for from him. Please think well of me, your servant. The woman went on her way, ate some food, and wasn't sad any longer. They got up early the next morning and worshipped the Lord. Then they came back home to Roma. Ekanah had sex with his wife, Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, which means I asked the Lord for him. When Ekanah and all his household went up to make an annual sacrifice and keep his solemn promise, Hannah didn't go. I'll bring the boy when he's weaned, she told her husband, so he can be presented to the Lord and stay there permanently. I will offer him as a Nazarite forever. Do what seems best to you, said Ekanah. Stay here until you've weaned him. But may the Lord bring to pass what you've promised. So the woman stayed home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. When he had been weaned and it was still very young, Hannah took him along with three-year-old bull, an epith of fire, a jar of wine, and brought him to the Lord's house at Shiloh. They slaughtered the bull and then brought the boy to Eli. Excuse me, sir, Hannah said. As surely as you live, sir, I am the woman who stood here next to you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this boy and the Lord gave me what I asked for. So now I give the boy back to the Lord. Why this he is given to the Lord? They worship there before the Lord. The epistle reading from 1 Peter 2, 2 through 10. Instead, like a newborn baby, desire the pure milk of the word, nourished by it. You will grow into salvation since you have tasted that the Lord is good. Now you are coming to him as a living stone. This stone was rejected by humans. From God's perspective, it's chosen, valuable. You yourselves are being built up like living stones into a spiritual temple. You are being made into a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices that you are acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. Thus it is written in the scripture, Look, I am laying a cornerstone in Zion, chosen, valuable. This person who believes in him will never be ashamed. So God honors you who believe. For those who refuse to believe, though, the stone that builders tossed aside has become a capstone. This is a stone that makes people stumble and a rock that makes people because they refuse to believe in the word, they stumble. Indeed, this is the end to be appointed. But you who are chosen race 
a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people who are God's own possessions. You are, have come out of, you have become these people so that you may speak the acts of the one who called you out of darkness into his amazing light. Once you were a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The gospel reading, the way, the truth, and the life. Don't be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. My father's house has rooms to spare. If it were not the case, I wouldn't have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. When I go to prepare a place for you, I will return and take you to be with me, so that where I am, you will be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas asked, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you have really known me, you will also know the Father. From now on, know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. Jesus replied, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been with you all this time? Whoever has seen the Father, me, has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I have spoken to you, I don't speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me does its work. Trust me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the account of the works themselves. I assure you that whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. They will do even greater works than these because I'm going to I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father can be glorified in the Son. When you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us go to God in prayer. O oh Lord, our rock, we stand upon you alone. We build our faith into a house made of living stones. We offer our prayers of compassion for families and friends to be taught anew the foundation of life that is love for you and neighbor. Offer us, O oh God, at least one clear opportunity to be of service to someone in need. I pray that you would search me and that my thoughts and words and deeds would be what your spirit wishes me to say. Let there be peace, Lord, with us, and let it begin with us, for we stand on Christ, the solid rock. Amen. In the last few weeks, we've been looking at biblical characters who suffered from mental issues. Since it's Mother's Day, I thought it would be appropriate to look at one of the women in the Bible who rose above unrealistic expectations. In researching this sermon, I read Kimberly Hepster's article on Hannah's journey, finding freedom from unrealistic expectations. We can look at the pressures, the cultural pressures on women then and even now. Today, most people are celebrating motherhood, leaving many women who are barren or who are inclined not to bear children of their own in a very difficult place. That is why we want to celebrate all women who mother us in ways, many ways, as well as men who have nurtured us in motherly ways. Scout leaders, Sunday school teachers, many. This week I mailed out cards with Lisa Baker's poem about mothering that remind us that it is all of our jobs to mother each other, day in and day out. And it's the most important job ever in these uncertain times. Yes, we have life because of our biological moms, but we have many more moms to thank today. 
now back to our story about hannah and you heard that long scripture but it's sort of important because of all that hannah went through hannah like many women felt that she was incomplete because she could not bear and in many cases a son it was as if she wouldn't have been able to have brought birth film called the Ju Duke and Duchess it even portrays how rich and powerful people think that having a son is the only way that they can survive so this cultural dynamic has been with us for a very long time Hannah's pain and heartache seemed totally unbearable a childless woman she lived in a culture that saw her as a failure now we're told her husband loved her. He didn't dismiss her as some husbands might have. But the thing that probably made it worse is the other wife that did have children taunted her and made it seem like she was not blessed by God. So like many of us, Hannah faced pressure of her own disappointment and then the unrealistic expectations of others. So how did Hannah freedom? The word of God reveals it in several ways. First, she poured out her misery before the Lord in prayer. Misery and depression threatened to consume Hannah and draw her away from the Lord. Instead, she poured out her pain and anguish before him in one of the most emotionally charged scenes in scripture. It says in Samuel 1, 1 through 10, 1, 10, In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. She reached out for help instead of just hiding. If Hannah, if I had been Hannah, I would have run away in embarrassment. Instead, Hannah took the opportunity to reach out for help. She told Eli her story and entered into a brief conversation with him. And likewise, we can reach out to others in our depression and engage in conversation that reduces our feelings of isolation. Hannah, secondly, applied God's word to her painful reality. Although it would have been easy for Hannah to compare herself to others and wallow in her pain, Instead, she decided to trust the Lord through prayer. Peace and hope come in believing God's word and resting in his truth. In spite of circumstances that demand otherwise, the psalmist wrote, As for me, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. Faithful to his promise given through the priest Eli, God did provide a son for Hannah. She allowed Eli's blessing to reshape her view of herself. Before Hannah went to the tabernacle to pray, the identity over her was one that her, that Phineph and others chose to call her unblessed. But she took that blessing that Eli gave and believed that God would provide. She allowed to look at herself and her situation positively. She believed that her situation was not a flaw of character, not something that should be tossed aside, inferior, but it was one so that God could prove his faithfulness. By listening to Eli, Hannah turned her negative view of the situation into a positive one. Perhaps we need to think of right now is there something that is in your life that you can't see a way forward that is nothing but negative but God is waiting to do a miracle can we look at that perhaps in positive terms finally we see that Hannah served the Lord with joy she brought her only son to the tabernacle at Shiloh and dedicated him to the Lord even before she found out that she was going to have a son, she looked at things with joy. It says she ate and she worshiped and she loved the Lord. 
she knew that raising Samuel ultimately and back to God was not about promoting himself or trying to win the approval of anyone. Hannah's story ends with her giving praise and finding a purpose in serving the Lord joyfully. Perhaps that's what's happening in your life right now. Perhaps some of the things that are happening are so that God can get the glory. She did address her physical needs, and it says in verse 18, the Bible said that she, uh, she ate, and then she face, her face wasn't downcast. Praying and talking to Eli did not immediately fix her situation. Sometimes we pray and we think, snap our fingers and God's got it fixed. It didn't happen that way. And it says in verse 20 that she didn't immediately become pregnant. It said in the course of time, God's timing. Instead, Hannah addressed the physical needs she'd been neglecting by not eating. The combination of food and a changed my mindset redirected Hannah into a path of hope and praise instead of hopelessness and downtrodden. When we don't know where to turn, the Bible gives us real answers. Sometimes the answers are hard ones, such as when God told Hagar to run to a difficult and unfair situation. Or when Ruth chose a struggling future with her mother-in-law rather than the comforts of another marriage. But regardless of what the Lord says, whether it's a yes or a no to our prayers, we can discover the sweetness that comes from being content in any and every situation, even a pandemic. If you are struggling with painful life circumstances, whether they're unrealistic, whether they're things of addiction, infertility, abusive marriage, backbiting friends, loss of the job, or even thoughts of suicide or more, we can help one another. We can lift one another up in prayer, and we can seek to be an Eli to speak blessing into someone's life. Though you face pain and heartache during a season, perhaps one day, you will be able to sing alongside Hannah, bursting with God's news. I'm walking on air. I'm laughing at my rivals. I'm dancing with salvation. Nothing and no one is holy like God. No rock mountain is like our God. Hannah never lost her faith. Her faith was in a God that had brought her through Good times and these difficult times. We rejoice that God blessed us. And then she gave him back to God. I remember several years ago standing at my son's casket and wondering how I was going to get through the years that followed because of the loss of Timothy. In a still small voice, I heard God remind me, Timothy was a blessing from him. God would never let me lose that connection, even though we might be separated for a while. In these days of separation and isolation, it's important to remember we are really never separated or isolated from God. He is with us. I was also able to remember that there are millions of mothers who have lost their children and lose them daily, and millions who want to be mothers, yet ask God and look up from their disappointment to possibilities and opportunities for us all to mother in different ways. It may be uncomfortable for some of you to think about our God as a mothering God, yet we have finite minds, and it is difficult for us to understand the infinity of our God. And in that complete image of God, I do see a mother. This morning, I ask you to take an opportunity to thank your mom. If she's alive, give her a phone call. If she's gone on to glory, then thank God that you had a mother for however long you did. And thank God for the many mothers who yet you've had in your lifetime. 
Use their lessons of wisdom, compassion, and love to share with those around, especially those in despair. And this morning, and uh, when we come to our sending forth hymn, I will be down by the cars, and I will be giving you a rose for each one of you to take. If you wish to take and give that rose to your mother or to go and lay it at her grave, you are free to do that. Or you may put it in a vase and as you see it and smell its sweet fragrance, give thanks for the mom that God has given you. Amen. This morning as we come to a time of commitment, I want to thank each one of you for your uh, your donations to help us with our ministries and let you know that you may still continue to mail those donations or go online to www.umcenter.com and make those donations or to even text a donation to 719-628-1800. We appreciate your support. And during this ham of commitment, it is well soul. Let us seek for this to be our song, that it is well with our soul. And bear with me just a moment while I pull up the music. Thank you. 
also linda clutter is graciously offered that was we collect food for the food pantry from at the plumbing store she will take any food items that you wish to bring especially proteins even even those that may be meat that you want to freeze and bring um and she was working with linda warsh to get that their need increases and so that will go on month if you would like to help with that go in peace and may the peace of god which shines brightly and vanquishes our darkness you go knowing that god is your rock and your refuge you are alone god is always with you amen and you'll be singing verse three of because he lives <laughs> 